You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products like Venom heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Welcome into Packers Total Access post game show, the very first one. So I can promise you this: this is going to be a bit of a clown show by the end of the night. Okay, this is our first time going live for a uh, a post game show, and I got my buddy Jacob here. My name is Clayton Bailey. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore Access. Obviously, the Packers and the Niners just wrapped up first preseason game of the year. Niners come out on top, twenty eight to twenty one. Jacob, initial impressions, man. What would you think of the game? I know there were some ups and downs, and I think we would both agree that, uh, you know, it's kind of surprising that the score was a little bit closer than it was. It felt like a blowout, did it not? Yeah, man, it did. Um, to be honest, when I when I entered this game, I thought maybe, like, we'd hang in there for the first series and then basically fall off of that. And we kind of did that, but more or less we, we stayed in the game for pretty much the whole game, honestly, until the last, I don't know, half of the fourth quarter, we were still in there ready to, you know, strike while the arm was hot kind of thing. And it's just, I, we did better. I, I will say that we did better than I thought we would. And I'm pleasantly surprised. I will say there's definitely some things that we need to work on, but coming out of this game healthy, mostly, I think that's a win right there. Yeah, I completely agree, man. Um, you know, it, it, Anytime you have a preseason game, especially that first one, it's just kind of a crapshoot. You know, I mean, you, you're like you said, you're looking to get out of there healthy, but you're also I, I kind of feel like it's uh, it's not talked about enough that in most cases they're they're trying to get that first cut ready. Right. They're trying to get you know, we've got to cut down to what, 80, 80 players on August the 23rd. So, you know, they're looking to let's get those guys the most playing time possible so we can trim this roster down and then get into the next phase of the install and all that. So I think a lot of that comes into play, but at the same time, and we've seen some good things and early on, it did not take long at all for Romeo Dobbs to show up. Right. And Bro. I'm telling you, man, it's uh, and, and don't get me wrong. He, he wasn't perfect. You know, he did several things, uh, you know, there, he, he made mistakes <laughs> in the game, but his route running ability, there's just something about it. I don't know if it's a quick twitch or what, but the guy can just get open. And uh, actually, matter of fact, we have this very first uh, touchdown here. Let's play this clip real quick. See if uh, see if the listeners can hear this. <clears throat> it's a blind They're going to go up. forward on fourth down. T Rock fourth down and three for the Packers. Here they go empty again. Two right and three left. 49ers bring pressure. Two inside backers come down the sideline. Romeo Dobbs a touchdown. 49ers had no one in the deep middle there as they brought Oren Burks and Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. Love it, man. You know, and, and the thing you noticed on that play, uh, Jacob, uh, for me was, you know, it was it was zero coverage, right? There was no safeties on the shelf. And the, uh, the defender was playing inside technique. So he was kind of taking that inside route, you know, whether it's a dig or a slant, taking that away. Dobbs recognized it right off the bat. I'm sure Love was on the same page, obviously. Just a quick stutter step, stutter step, good release. You've seen that all camp long with Romeo Dobbs. There's something about his release, and in and, and no way, shape, or form am I going to compare him to Devontae Adams, okay? But it's kind of got that feel to it. You know, Tay had that quick twitch, quick feet off the right off the line, and Dobbs tends to show that. Now, on the negative side, uh, the you know, the drop passes kind of showed up tonight too, right? But it's a young receiver. You know, we talked about this on Ryan's live stream 
on how, you know, uh, Tay was the same way for the first two, even three years, right? Being in the league, he, he had those drops. And you made a joke that you had friends saying they need to cut him, right? And and I heard the same type of thing, you know. But what did you think of Dobbs, man, just initially? Um, was – am I the only person that's like, holy cow, every time this kid's on the field, he's showing up? No, I mean, obviously – he has been amazing in camp. And so what you want to see is him progress and take that step into actual live playing. And I think tonight he did, you know, like you said, it's a little bit, he's got seven targets. He's got three receptions for 45 yards, but some of those receptions, like you said, the one where he drops it, where it's in his bread basket from five yards out, you're like, Oh man, here we go. But then the next play, literally the next play, he's going on a slant route and he catches it basically like against his helmet in traffic contested he obviously had the touchdown route where he can like you said he breaks off the line like it's very easy and you said you don't want to conv- compare him to Devonte, but Devonte, like you said had a couple early years in the league where he came from a semi was it uh was it san or no where did Devonte come from uh, not necessarily the school that you would think would be okay that's a huge school uh dobbs coming from nevada He was Mm -hmm. a big deep threat. I still think that he has a lot of those capabilities. And you could see that, that touchdown he grabbed, you know, he's looking for the ball. He's reaching over his shoulder. He's doing all these things. And then he just boneheads a couple of plays where he drops it, where it's right in his bread basket. And apparently that's his MO. So that being said, he looked great in, you know, in, in positions where he looked great. Juwan Winfrey, my guy, didn't necessarily (laughs) wow anybody, but I mean, he had three targets, three receptions, 27 yards. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Danny Davis looked actually really great. Danny um, Dobbs. Again, he's, he's a dark horse to even make the practice squad, but he right. had two receptions for 45 yards. I could not believe this, that B.J. Baylor had two receptions for 75 yards? Yeah. Two targets? Right. Yeah. That and did not I- register with me, but it just, you know, once you see it on paper, it's a little bit yeah, inspiring he- there. Yeah, he had that that huge play there too on the wheel route, right? And um, you know, I believe it was like a sixty yard, sixty eight yard, yeah. Right, and there. and I'll tell you, you know, that was I believe it was Danny Etling that just dropped it right in the basket. I mean, that was what a what a beautiful throw, what a beautiful catch, and and it's kind of what Ryan was talking about. He, you know, Baylor tends to show up in the passing game, whether it's pass blocking or or catching a ball out of the backfield. And one thing that that comes out of that side of the ball and, and that position specifically. I'm pretty sure Taylor's played himself off the off the team. I mean, it, it kind of feels that way. Do you agree? I do, man. The the few times of so number one, we didn't see him in there that many times. I mean, Goodson basically ran the first half, right? And so the mm-hmm. fact that after that, that you saw Taylor for like a couple plays and the plays that he was in, like we talked about, the guy runs like he's got something, you know, like a two by four taped to his spine or something. Like you need to lower <laughs> your head, bro. Like you got to get in there. And he used to be, you know, a very, very well-rounded back. And I think that it was obvious that the Packers thought that of him because of the way that they showed him on the depth chart. The fact that he's getting second round reps or second team reps to Goodson. And then they didn't even keep him in there very long. And like you said, I think he played himself out because they, I think they did back to back slant passes to the guy where he just had to make a very base to catch maybe fall forward for like two or three yards. And that's kind of what the Packers MO. You think about what Aaron Jones does, what, what Dylan does. If it's second and three, we throw a flat pass out. They just fall forward. You get the first down, right? That's a very staple part of our offense. He showed that he cannot do that. So I don't see him, like you said, making this team. I mean, I think he played himself out. Dexter Williams though, man, (laughs) I mean, honestly, for a guy that has not, doesn't have any business to be running on the field. He was pretty much our best i mean goodson had 12 carries for 37 yards only average 3.1 hit a long of seven dexter williams comes in with three carries 20 yards rushing 9.7 average and i mean a long of 26 that's i'm not gonna say that's nothing to shake a stick at you know right yeah no doubt no doubt and you know the thing that really really stood out to me too um goodson just being very shifty you know i mean Shiftier than I thought he'd be. Yeah, he he just seems like uh, in, I mean he's he's got that third spot right now. You know, obviously with Kylan Hill, uh, you know, still being out. So uh, we got Pack Daddy trying to join here. Let's see if we can get him in. I think he's ready. We'll see. 
may have connection issues anyway. Um, so yeah, Goodson kind of stood out to me when he was in the game. Um, he, he got quite a bit of snaps too. Um, you know, look good, look shifty. Jordan Love was, he was hot or cold, right? I mean, he made a couple of throws there that were just spot on. Uh, one of which, uh, Dobbs, you know, did kind of screw up. Um, and, uh, there on the, on the deep route kind of got almost like he got locked up at the top of the route, but at the same time, man, they, they went to Dobbs early and often. Um, so yeah, Jordan Love, to me, he looked accurate at times, and, and there was the one play, uh, the one pick there on the slant attempt to uh, Amari Rogers, and we talked about this on the live stream. And, you know, the thing that, that stood out to me was the pre-snap read there. You could see it, and, and it's easy for me to say watching the replay and rewinding it and all that, but you could just tell it was man coverage, and the guy who was lined up on Amari Rogers was playing inside technique, so he's playing inside shade, and – and it was just like Jordan didn't even recognize it. Jordan just dropped back. He knew where he was going with the ball. He didn't care that that the pre-snap read would have suggested he go, you know, somewhere else. And uh, yeah, it was disastrous, you know. So uh, again, there was some push in the pocket, but Jordan just went out there and kind of let it let it wing, you know. And um, you take the good with the bad, man. This is uh this is the time to see what you got. And uh, well, unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's just funny because. Every year, I feel like we go through this. Last year, we went through it with Kirk Bankert. We've been, been through it with a, a number of other third-string quarterbacks where the second-string quarterback goes in there against sometimes first-string defense, sometimes against those tweener guys, right? And it doesn't necessarily perform. And then Etling, so let's go. Let's compare Jordan Love. 13 for 24, 176 yards, 7.3 average, two touchdowns, three interceptions. That's a rating of 66.0. Then you got Danny Etling coming in at the last, well, I shouldn't say the last minute, but the last, you know, playing with the scrubs. He's six for eight. He's 123 yards, 15.4 average, one touchdown, zero interceptions. He's only got one sack. He's 156.3 rating. And so you say, well, then obviously you got to start Etling. That's the better quarterback. No, nah, man, he's just not going against that tier of competition that necessarily love is and i'm not giving loving out i think that throwing three interceptions is trash two of them i would argue are not his fault the third one i definitely know is his fault um and i don't know i just i liked what i saw out of love to be honest with you when i saw him in the first two drives i was like that's a, da a guy that's that's poised he seems calm he seems like he's doing his reads he seems like he's doing his footwork right and then again this is where the love haters can come right in and be like exactly what we told you he'll fold when the when the situation needs him to not fold he'll throw picks he'll force balls ryan where are you <laughs> that's where that's what she said would come in but anyways it's just it's the typical jordan love game i honestly feel like we have nothing more to learn from jordan love we have not learned anything more than we do or don't know he did exactly what we thought would happen. He yeah. played okay, and then we had a question mark, which is his whole career. Yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much summed it up, and and we were all excited to see what he would Packard do tonight. Packard just said, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, man. Um, yeah, he, he kind of played exactly how we've, you know, come to, you know, to see him play, you know. Um, I One don't, step forward, two steps back. Yeah, yeah, and and you got to take into consideration though. To me, he looked better in that first quarter when he, you know, when Dobbs was in, and, and you know, and there was you know a little bit better talent around him. But we've never seen Jordan Love other than one time against Kansas City, right? We've never seen Jordan Love play with a healthy bunch of number ones around him. He, he just almost had won him. that game, man. He almost won yeah, that game. Absolutely. So he outplayed you know, and, Patrick Mahomes in that game, by the way. Yeah, very, very, very true. And, you know, the thing that really stands out to me uh, about Jordan Love and that whole situation with the draft pick and everything, you know, like Greg Cosell says, there's two drafts every year. There's a quarterback draft and then there's every other position that's drafted. Right. And it's obvious that Jordan Love was on that that top tier of quarterbacks for the Packers. And that's why they drafted him. And the, the other thing you got to take into consideration is the money that was saved, the money that's continuing to be saved with him being your backup. That's just about as cheap a backup as you can find. I mean, when you really look across the league, there's a lot of teams that are paying anywhere from, you know, six to eight to $12 million for a backup. 
right? So there's a, there's a little bit of value there too. And again, it's early, man. I, I want to see him with the number ones, and I want to, you know, you can't really judge what he is until you get a consistent or a uh, a good saturation of games, you know, with him uh, with him with uh, number ones around him. But Levitt got burned, right? That was pretty ugly. So that was times, a note. What's that? I said I think a couple times. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty ugly. Uh, Rico Gaffrey got turned around there on one route. He was in man coverage, and it looked absolutely. <clears throat> horrible um tyler davis with the drop that led to the pick you know you're going to look at the stat line with jordan love and it looks it looks really bad but in all honesty it's not as bad um as the stats would suggest you know you had like i said tyler davis with that drop pick and you know first thing that (laughs) that ryan said was why do people love this guy so much (laughs) right i said that Ryan just was silent because he always thinks that. <laughs> was I'm it true? Sure. <laughs> yeah, dude, he had two targets, zero yards, one interception, six points for the other team, basically. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so Tyler Davis kind of went down a notch. But, you know, like we were talking about, who's going to play that Tunyon row out of the tight end room other than Davis? I mean, you got you got Mac and Canelo. Maybe Deguara. I yeah. think maybe Deguara is they try to make him not a halfback kind of guy, maybe more of a – I think he could do it. You know, you saw that. Remember when he took that short pass in Detroit and ran it for like 70 yards? Like, you can see glimpses of him doing that stuff. It's just. Yeah, absolutely. And Deguara had a couple of catches there. It looked like Jordan was going to him uh, there on one drive. So he, he didn't necessarily look bad. And uh, then you had love to Danny Davis. Danny Davis kind of shined a little bit, didn't he? Not, not as if he has a, a chance to make this roster, but he's definitely fighting for that practice squad spot. Two targets, and, two catches, 45 yards, and a touchdown, man. And a tud. Like, <laughs> Come on. How do so, you go better than that, you know? Yeah, again, you're not going to obviously keep him over a Winfrey or a Torre or whoever makes the bottom of that receiver room on the active roster. But, again, you put him on the practice squad, you know, who knows what he might turn into here in a couple of years. You're kind of splitting hairs at that point. Um, you know, like we said, halfback Taylor kind of playing himself off the roster the way it seems right now. There's a whole lot of ball left. I'm not saying he'll be a part of that initial cut uh, cut down, but uh, there's a, there's also a good chance of it. The, one of the big names that stood out to me, though, Jacob, was, was Jack Heflin. Jack Heflin had a pretty good game, man. Trash can full of dirt. I'm telling you, dude, it's catching on, bro. It's catching on. <laughs> it was all over Twitter, too. You know, he was just – he was in the backfield. He was disruptive, and he's just one of those guys that won't go away, you know, and, and he's a big body. He's got some quickness. I think it was – it Coach Hahn was talking about his hands on the mm-hmm. – yeah. Coach Hahn was like, look at the size of this guy's hand. <laughs> he's just a, a corn-fed – did you say he was from Iowa? He's an Iowa boy, pretty sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. He looks like he should be named Jethro. That's for sure, man. He was um, he was the the TJ Slayton of that draft where I was like, Heflin's going to be the man. And like, <laughs> right. Slayton's going to be man this week or this year. It's Wyatt's going to be the man. So yeah. they're all and the man. I'll tell you somebody else who showed up tonight, and uh, it, it'll probably go a, a little more unnoticed than it would if if Love hadn't had you know such a bad game. But uh, Amari Rogers, the fifty yard. Um, kickoff return, right? That was a kickoff. I just return. caught one more ball. I could have made fifty bucks tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that's top priority on this show, guys. Are the gambling habits? All right, it's we. That's right. we you got to pay the bills. You know, I'm paying the piper. That's right. But you had that big uh, special teams play by him. But then also you had a quick little bubble screen that uh, that he took to the house. And let's uh, let's listen to that real quick as I try to key this up, Jacob. Let's see if we can get this audio to play for the listeners. Wow. Um, it's just so nice to see uh, Amari Rogers kind of show up um, tonight. And, and, again, it happened in the first preseason game. Let's see if he can put it together all season long. But you can kind of kind of tell on this play this is what he's good at. And you mm-hmm. see him try to do this last year when, uh, when Amari was in the game. It just never really came together, and he had very, very limited reps. But uh, here's that touchdown play by Amari Rogers played really well and they're, they're giving him more snaps at safety quick throw out left to Amari Rogers down the sideline Hawk is trying to save the touchdown they yes. dive for the pie line there and Green Bay has tied the game at 20. yeah and again it, you know it was just one of those plays where just a quick quick design right everything was already prefab and uh Amari stepped up so um, what, you, what do you think about Amari Rogers, man? This, you got a, one special teams play. You got the touchdown catch on the bubble screen, which that's kind of what he's in the offense to do. Yeah. Do you think Amari takes a step forward this year? 100%. I think he took a massive step forward in this game. Like you said, 
everyone was hating on Amari for muffin punts. Well, you know what? He was a rookie. You go try muff or taking a punt. You know what I mean? With 11 guys bearing down on you. First time you're in the NFL. See how that goes. I'm just saying, try that out and see what you have to do. If you want to talk some smack tonight, like he, he really was, I mean, he had two returns, 69 yards. He averaged 34.5. I mean, guys, that's better than we've ever had in green Bay of all time. And, 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 he seems like it's he's picking up of what happened of last year. Remember, we all hated him for a few mistakes, but trending into the end of the season last year, this guy was decent. He was doing well, better than, like I said, other than Trevor Davis back in the day or some of those guys. Um, he has some promise, and he seems like he's less afraid to field the ball. I think the uh, Pisaccia or all those guys are being like, you're going to have to grow up or you're going to get off this team kind of thing. You know what I mean? And so – I think he's he's taken on that responsibility. It seems like he's more confident. He looks like he can handle the ball. He looks more like the receiver that we thought we were drafting a couple of years ago. And now he's starting his body is starting to fill what you know what we think he can be. You know, he's got to put on that weight, he's got to learn how to be shifty, he's got to learn how to get off of blocks and how to shed, you know, coverage. I, I think he's doing it. I think he's He's from a great pedigree, pedigree. I know that, so he's willing to work, and I think I think the coaches love him. And he talked about how Pasaccia reamed him out over and over and over, and how he went back and he's like, "Do you think that you know, blah blah blah?" He hates you. He goes, "No, he loves me because he wants me to get better, and that's how I know this because he keeps harping on me. If he didn't yell at me, then I'd be worried." And I think that's awesome. Absolutely, you know something Aaron Rodgers said about Josh Myers too. You know, he said. Uh, if if I'm talking to you, if I'm if I'm screaming at you, it means I believe in you. You know, and, and I had coaches tell me the same thing when I was when I was younger. And, and you know, when you're young and immature, you, <laughs> when you're young and immature, you don't want to hear it. But we looking back, it's like, yeah, when they stop talking to you, they've given up on you. Right. So, you know, another thing uh, here, Samori Torre, man, three catches, 42 yards. He only he was only targeted four times. This kid, man, he just it just seems like he can catch the football. He can create a little bit of space. Um, I know Ryan, he seems like he's pretty dead set that, that Samori Torre is going to be a practice squad guy, and it does make sense seeing that you could probably pass him on. I mean, obviously, I don't think there's another team that's willing to sign him and, and take up an active roster spot. But at the same time, um, he, to me, he's he's had a pretty good camp, and he showed up there tonight with those, those three catches. Anything stand out to you about Samori Torre tonight? I think he's had a great camp and I would um, wonder. So if we throw him on practice squad, does the team have to do anything to sign them? Do they have to give up any sort of tender, any sort of draft pick? Um, what What is the, the stipulation with that? Uh, specifically meaning what? If we okay. throw Tori on our practice squad, other teams can sign him, correct? Right. Just willy nilly that we don't, we don't have any recourse of that. We don't have any rebuttal. We have to just accept that. Right, yeah. To the best of my knowledge, once you go to put a player on practice squad, they have to clear waivers. Once they clear waivers, they make it to the practice squad. Right. Well, in that waiver process, teams have an opportunity to sign that player, but they can't just sign them and put them on their practice squad. They you have, have to, to go to their active them. roster. Yeah, right. I don't yeah. believe there's any draft picks involved in that, but that might be something we could uh, double check on later. No, I'm just wondering, like, if that's ever a situation where. Let's say Samari Tori is lighting it up, and our same situation at wide receiver is there. And say Dallas, because they've lost so many of their wide receivers, they want Samari Tori and they want him before the waiver wire. Is there any way that you could like do a trade or, or I don't know? I'm just trying to think of like weird ways that the Packers could benefit off of a guy that other teams want that they know that they can't keep, but they don't just want to cut to the waiver wire. And I'm trying yeah, to figure out how they could. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. 
And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the icon of vacations. Icon of the seas. Arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Yeah, it's a good question, but, I, you know, it's it's kind of unprecedented. I, don't know. I mean, like, I'm just – because I feel yeah. like that every team, when they, they're like, I, you know, I hope we cut this guy. I hope our team stays the way it is. And I know that other players – are sharked off of all the teams, you know, a lot of the time. And so I just, I don't know, man. Samari Tori seems like, I don't think he's such a lock that nobody else wants him, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, you look at players or teams like Dallas, teams like the Chiefs, where have you read some of the stuff about MVS in, in camp? No, it's, it sounds horrible, right? <laughs> sounds just like MVS. He's yep. real fast. And every now and then he can catch a deep ball. But other than that, it's like, ugh. and then in Dallas, I mean, they lost a lot of guys and Jerry Jones seems very adamant that they're not going to sign any um, veterans or any of that kind of stuff. But I just, I feel like there's going to be a lot of off season activity just because it's, I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of good guys out there, man. Danny Gray. You saw what Danny Gray did tonight, right? Yeah. I mean, he was a guy that one of the fastest wide receivers in the league, or I'm sorry, in the draft. And they got him at a very, very discounted rate. I'd say in the draft and, Sure enough, he starts looking like he's almost our their version of our Romeo Dobbs. So, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, also uh, your boy Jawan Winfrey, three targets, three, three catches. Three. That's a hundred percent, sir. And I'll tell you the thing: <laughs> the thing that I noticed Perfect. about Jawan Winfrey, he 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 looks like he belongs. He really does. And you know, when you look at when you look at the depth chart there, it's going to come down to Torre and Winfrey. And uh, right now. I, I yep. see your all's point. You know, Winfrey's probably the guy. He, re, he really is. Um, that would probably be my pick, you know, as of right now, for sure. Josiah DeGuara, three targets, had two catches. Um, let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. And, um, you know, the big name that stayed out here, especially for a defensive lineman, was six, six total tackles, had one for a loss. Chris Slayton. I mean, that's, that's kind of surprising there. Not the Slayton we thought. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. And we've got Slayton, you know, outside of the uh, outside of the roster, cut down to six. I don't, you know, I don't see him carrying more than six, and I just don't see Slayton making the team. But he really showed up. He's putting some film out there for other Dude, teams. You want to know what? Let's let's talk about the top seven, okay? Chris Slayton, Isaiah McDuffie, Tyreek Carpenter, Kobe Jones, Jack Heflin, Keandre Thomas, and Dalen Levitt, and then <laughs> followed by Kingsley and Barre. And Barre. I don't know, man. I think it's a nag bar, but I could be wrong. I'm just um, telling you. And then after that is Tipa <laughs> and Ty Summers. And granted, obviously, the you know, the you had to love it, man. Right in the middle of the live broadcast with Pac Daddy. Um, you could hear in the background Kevin Harlan call him Enig Barre. Enig Barre. <laughs> and, and all you see, I immediately found Jacob on the screen. He just kind of gave me that side eye looking up like oh, I, told side you, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> but Although yeah, that doesn't prove anything because we've literally <laughs> heard him say it two different ways. So, but exactly. I think that's interesting, and I think that's encouraging. Chris Slayton, like you said, who? who? Isaiah McDuffie, Tyreek Carpenter, who I agree, Ryan, he's been kind of, you know, MIA in this camp, and we, I'd love to see him do more. Um, Kobe Thomas, I've never seen, or I'm sorry, Keandre Thomas, Kobe Jones, uh, Jack Heflin. I mean, he, he looks like he's very upset that he's not a lock to make this roster. And I, I think yep. it's great. I, I like that. Yeah. Come on but back to uh, Enig Barre. I mean, three tackles, right? Do you remember that one that he came around the edge? Yeah. One sack, 
right? He had one sack, one yep. tackle for a loss, and he had two quarterback hits. I mean, the guy showed up. Granted, he was playing in the second half, and he's going up against third stringers, but this is a fifth-round pick. And, and you know, I know Coach Hong got really, really excited on the broadcast there um, when he seen that straight arm. He just – I mean, he literally just hit him with a, a quick move, straight left arm, right underneath the chin, totally legal, put it, you know, just just right on right above the sternum, and then took the edge, got the sack, looked really good. and But that's what he did well, right? It, it's going to come down to run defense for Kingsley. Yeah, and, you know, if he, if he wants to have any kind of role, you know, he's he's got to got to become a pro at setting that edge and playing the run. What were you going to say, Jake? I was just going to say I don't think he shows up in any way on the stat line, but I remember Garvin coming around the corner mm-hmm. and setting the edge on a field early place, on. Yeah, where he, you know, I think that the fact that he only was maybe given 10, 12 snaps or whatever it was, and that he seemed to show up there. I think that shows that one, they like him and they don't want to have him overuse himself. And that two, he has potential. So, and I don't know exactly what we were doing because you can't tell me that they have Trey Lance, who's their number one quarterback going in the season, that they're going to put a second O line behind him and all this. So in my opinion, we had our second team defense going against their first team offense, pretty much minus maybe a few of the specialty players. And I thought we did, pretty good a lot yeah. better than i thought we would to be honest yeah i agree man um you know as the game went on it seemed like it got a little more comfortable and i know it you know some of the the officiating got a little yeah. bit question i don't i don't understand why the officials are so um i don't know caught up in in being seen in a preseason game but it sure felt like that was the vibe for me right um yeah. now sean ryan go ahead no, that's exactly what I was going to say. Is those those guys seem like they uh, they were very excited to see the camera. That's yes, ex- exactly. Ma, look at me. Hi, Ma. I was going to say, hi, Ma. <laughs> I'm on TV now. Now, you know, I think we would all agree Sean Ryan's been very underwhelming in camp. It just seems like there's multiple notes on him getting turned around and, and you know, just kind of getting abused. And he got in the game tonight. He left with an injury. However, he did return. Rob Domofsky did say that he returned to the game. So, uh, seems to be healthy in that regard. But at the same time, man, every time you turn around, Jacob, it looks like Sean Ryan is, is on the ground. And, and of, of the entire draft, draft night, right, when, when Sean Ryan was taken, I feel like that was the most exciting offensive line pick of the night. And now looking back, it's kind of like, okay, well, Zach Tom. Now, Zach Tom seems to be kind of, you know, showing something right so mm-hmm. what did you think uh what do you think about sean ryan obviously you're not going to cut him being a little bit higher of a pick but uh oh, man, man it's just been disappointing honest, I, I i don't know just because i in in years previous i would never think of cutting that type of offensive lineman but seeing how he's been kind of thrown around throughout the training camp and i'm intrigued by the couple of the other giants that we have we talked about, uh, I believe it's it's Caleb Jones. He's like 6'10 or something like that, like sitting down. You can literally see him like eclipsing the other players. Mm-hmm. Um, you got guys like Rasheed Walker where, you know, let's see what they can do. Uh, honestly, I, I've said it before. I'm still a little bit worried about our offensive line. Seeing this game against a 49ers defensive front where I think that they actually did – come out to play they probably wanted to thump us more than i think that we got so i I, i'm impressed honestly i'm not gonna sit here and say that our offensive line was trash i wish we could have done a lot more in the running game but you guys have to remember that this is our patched together offensive line going against their presumptual first and a half line defense probably second line defense and even their second line defense guy or their second string defense is the 49ers defensive line they're very very well formed and and they're good players so yeah the fact that we had a decent night i honestly this whole night the fact that it's 21 28 i look at that as a win if you look back at packers preseason games guys we usually get blown out we don't use this Packers coaches don't care about whether or not we're going to lose. They want to see where their guys are, what they're doing, how progressed they are. So I'm not too worried, to be honest. As long as we get Bach back and we get Elton back in somewhat of a fast schedule, I don't care anymore. I'm not I'm not too worried, but 
we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I feel like the offensive line held up pretty well. And Jordan Love, they one thing okay. that – They did yeah. all right. Yeah, and one thing that stood out to me about Jordan Love, he was standing in the pocket. Now, he showed some mobility, but he did step up in that pocket, and he stood strong. Um, that's a good sign. Well, Matt, Coach Matt LaFleur was at the podium just a second ago. Let's uh, let's dip in here and take a listen and uh, and see what Coach LaFleur had to say when he met with the media. Operation, it was a smooth operation, and I thought he got us in and out of the huddle extremely uh, crisp and with urgency. Um you know, I thought he made some off-schedule plays. He showed some some nice, nice athleticism on a couple of those runs as well. And um, so there was a lot of good good things out there from Jordan. Just the poise that he showed in the pocket, that's something that we were looking at. And, um, you know, overall, I thought just the process of everything, I thought it was uh, a, a pretty good first step for him. And how much do those three picks do detract from the good things that did, though? Well, I, again, I think two of those you can totally take off of. The, the third one, again, we had two bus crowds because the ball really shouldn't have gone there um, on that play. But he had nowhere else to go to the football, and he forced it in there. And, you know, the defender made a good play. But, uh, you know, we, we just got to clean up everything around him. A lot of times, we say it all the time about quarterbacks. They're going to get too much credit when we do well, and they're going to get a lot of the blame when we don't. And that's just... The reality of playing that position in this league, and um, but I, I was pleased with George's performance. Line play in front of him, and then later Danny. Yeah, I thought our offensive line did a much better job. I thought they held up really nicely uh, throughout the course of the games. Certainly, there's it was it wasn't perfect. Uh, there are a couple of runs that I think that we could have blocked up a little bit better, but. By and large, I thought they did, they did a nice job. I was really happy with the effort the guys gave. Uh, Really, in, in every phase, I thought the guys were were competing, playing, playing with great urgency, playing with great effort, playing together. Uh, nobody was kind of making up their own stuff out there, which tends to happen sometimes when you get your first exposure in, in a you know NFL football game, a preseason game. And so, I thought by and large, the guys did a nice job. Do you think the touchdown ball that Dobbs just being able to actually carry that over from Romeo? Yeah, that was a great moment. And, you know, played man coverage, and uh, he, he went off the line of scrimmage. And it was one of those where he went so so big, it's like you, you don't want to miss the layup. And Jordan did a nice job of giving him a catchable ball and running up to finish it. All right. So, again, he's talking about that release that we were just talking about, Jacob. And um, it's, it's pretty cool, man. I mean, you're talking about a rookie stepping right in. And like he said, we we seen it on the replay. It was zero coverage. There was no help over the top. It was just – I kind of feel like you've seen that on both sides to a certain extent. You didn't see that typical um, Coach Barry cover four, right? So I think what happens in these preseason games is, is much like the joint practices. The two coaches come together and they make an agreement and say, all right, look, here, let's, let's put our players in a position where they can actually compete tonight rather than, hey, let's see who can win the game. And it kind of felt like that across the board, but it's uh, it's pretty cool that Coach Lafleur noticed that with uh, with Romeo Dobbs beating him off the line, and that's the thing. You the more footage you see on Dobbs, you start to see what he does good and what he does bad, and that release is looking pretty good, man. What do you what do you think? I mean, yeah, man. I I think at this point it's safe to say that it's not a fluke. You know, we've we've studied Bears fans, we've studied Lions fans, even Vikings fans, where they go off on a guy because he had two or three days of practice, and they're like, "Man, he's the next coming." You know, and um, <laughs> we've even tried Ryan make sure that we tamp ourselves down from that expectation. So, if right. we ever get hyped up on a guy, Ryan comes in the next podcast and he's like, "Here's why he sucks." He's just down, and he, right? yeah, I'm like little orphan Annie over here. Yeah, exactly. So he <laughs> and even he has now been, I think, uh, converted into being a believer. And tonight, again, we saw something that we don't necessarily love. Romeo Dobbs can make a great play where he's turning over the back of his shoulder. He's grabbing it. He's getting his feet in line. And then when you're five feet in front of him, he can drop a ball that's right in front of you. That's kind of <laughs> right. something that's, that's, that's been tailored to him. But um, And again, you look at the fact that he was only – caught three balls after being targeted seven times, I believe. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily put that on Dobbs, but there are certain catches that he should have made, and I think he can make. And I think that um, 
Lazard and Watkins. And whenever Watson gets back, the fact that we have Dobbs, the fact that we possibly could have Tory or a Winfrey or obviously a Cobb and Rogers, we do not have a, a, a non deep. We don't have a shallow wide receiver corpse. We have anything, an overly deep wide receiver corpse that does not understand where they align. We don't know where, who's the head, who's the alpha, who's the beta. We don't understand that yet because we haven't been put to the fire. And I think that tonight we took a step in that direction, but we obviously don't know exactly what we have because their starters aren't there. So it's, it's just taken a little bit of a piece of what we could be. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's very well said. We had Jordan Love at the podium just a second ago, so let's uh, let's Ooh. go live there and see, see, what, being see what QB1 of the night had to say. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I probably don't want to hear it. Here we go. No, Here's no. Jordan Love. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I think we were moving the ball great. Um, you know, got in some scoring positions. Um, and, yeah. I know you don't want to throw any of your teammates under the bus, but do you feel like, I mean, this could have been a... Hold up. I know you don't want to throw any, any of your teammates under the bus, but here... I know, I know you didn't clear. kill your, I know you didn't kill your, your wife. wife. How'd she, How she die? die? <laughs> a better night for you if, uh, if, you know, just a couple of those catches are made? Yeah, I mean, I think for everybody, it could have been a, a better night. You know, the ball just, you know, happens to bounce in you know, a weird way. Um, you know, they capitalize on those. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I think... Uh, Obviously, no one wants that to happen, and uh, it sucks when it does. The game action means how much more to you than practice, or not much more to you than practice. Can you say that again? It means how much more to you than the practice work. Oh, uh, I think the game action means a lot. Um, you know, just being able to get those reps, seeing different looks on the defense, um, and just going against different guys. You know, it's, it's the intensity is a little bit higher. Um, and uh, I think the game action is a lot better than practice. On the uh, on the third interception, Coach Lafleur said that uh, a couple guys ran the wrong route. You kind of only had one choice to, to get it to Amari. Can, can you just kind of take us through like what what happened there, and what you saw? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we ran a play. Um, you know, Amari kind of had a two way go on the read, um, and they played too high. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things we weren't really expecting them to play much too high. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things, uh, just got the wrong read on it. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, the ball, the route he ran, you know, the ball is still behind him, um, able for the defender to undercut it. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's just something that you don't want to happen, but, uh, you know, it's just something to learn from. That was that very play that we were talking about, Jacob. And you heard him, yeah. he said he wasn't expecting him to play two man under, right, two man read. And when he snapped the ball on a two man under, in that specific situation, you had the DB playing that inside technique, basically saying, okay, we're going to take the short underneath route away. You're going to have to play either outside the numbers and you're darn sure not going to go up top. And uh, when, as soon as we seen the replay, we, we called it out. We were like, wow, yeah, he just – he didn't even go to go through a progression. It was obviously a pre-snap misread, and he just tried to hammer it into uh, Amari. And like he said – it was a bad ball anyway, but a bad decision all the way around. So, um, again, though, Jordan Love, man, this is this is what's great about the preseason. Give me more of it. I want to see him again next week. Yeah. I want to see what we got. So, uh, yeah. Um, as we get ready to wrap up here, any, any, any uh, parting thoughts before we give away our Monday Night Football Packers. Oh, ran. I forgot about that. Right. We're giving away our indoor club seat tonight with a VIP tailgate uh, party pass. Um, one lucky listener is going to be going to a, a Packer game with us. Like I said, December 19th, but we're going to be indoors uh, living, the, living the good life on top of Lambeau Field up there um, watching some football. But before we get to that, any uh, any parting comments here before we wrap up? Man, I just – I'm so happy to be back with Packers football, to be back with all the guys, and it's just uh, – man, it's fun. It's so fun. <laughs> like, we're – we got a lot of things in the mix, guys. Um, a lot of things that you may, never, uh, may not expect, uh, some big deals kind of stuff, and um, maybe some future podcast stuff that we got going on, and hopefully we get to the point where we start interviewing players because I think that we're on that caliber. We're getting there. We're about to get there. 
and um just stay tuned because we have a lot of good stuff coming like it's 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 almost like drinking from a fire hose we have a lot of stuff coming <laughs> really fast and we're trying to trying to you know maintain it all so right uh i don't know clayton what else what else we got well first of all i just want to say this was kind of a trial run for our post game show we're going to do this all year and uh there was already some hiccups in this and we're going to iron them out and get better as we as we move forward so when week one gets here we're going to have you guys an awesome product i know there's many people that are listening to this right now on a podcast as well um and that's the goal this is going to be something that you could tune in live immediately following the game but then you can also catch it on a pod the next day or, or late tonight if you're still up uh you know if you sober up wake up on the couch at 3 a.m and want to listen to something you know what i mean we'll have you have you a pod to listen to but with that being said man let's let's do a little giveaway here i'm going to share the screen and show you guys how we have this set up first of all i want to say thank you to everyone who entered the uh the giveaway all right so let's go ahead and share this and i know this is boring on the pod probably because you can't see it but what we have here we ended up having 540 entries gang 540 okay and you know we had our uh, a gofundme attached to help drew get a seizure service dog and you guys showed up big time man and as you're looking at this wheel for those of you who are watching online just to kind of give you an idea you can see these big colors right here these are the large donations we had I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list some of these large donations off because we really, really, really appreciate it. You had Carol Horton, who donated $500 to Drew's Caesar Service Dog. You had Seth Reuter, who also donated $500. I mean, they, that absolutely blows me away. You had Oscar Cardona, who had $400. Then you had Eric Spiegel with $250. You had Matt Comstock at $100. And then you have Brian, I'm probably going to mess up the name, Pichawit, at $100. So I, I wanted to name drop you guys because those were the donations over $100. This giveaway, I know you guys didn't donate $500 to win a ticket, although there's you, you've made yourself, uh, you've given yourself a great chance to win it. Um, I know that uh, you did it because you wanted to help out Drew. And we truly, truly appreciate it. And there's going to be other giveaways. We've already got other giveaways in the works. But uh, this was a fun one to do. Again, I purchased the ticket. It's five hundred dollars in value, and then you had the VIP tailgate party pass. That's uh, that's actually seventy five dollars in value. So, as you look at this wheel, you see the heavy hitters. You also got some some smaller donations, but and then you've got down here the Twitter entry or the the Twitter entries right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna go up here and sort this. Actually, we're gonna shuffle this. Okay. So now what it's going to do is evenly distribute these. All right. Again, 540 entries. So what we're going to do is we're, let's go ahead and spin the wheel. And the winner of the Monday Night Football giveaway Packers Rams at Lambeau is Mr. Seth Ruder. Ooh, I, think I know that name. Yeah, he's like he's on Twitter. That's, that's been a follower. Yeah, had a little okay. bit of. Yeah, he and again he donated five hundred dollars. Man, he he is he is oh, on oh. this wheel many that's times. Right. There. So congratulations to Mr. Seth Ruder. You are the winner of our Monday Night Football giveaway. We will see you at Lambeau, December nineteenth, Packers Rams. But as a formality, what we need to do here is spin it one more time, and let's get a backup winner in case we can't find Mr. Seth Ruder. Um, so we have a, a winner there. So let's spin the wheel one more time. Yeah. So that's at LaCrema, I guess. L-A-C-R-E-M-A. At L-A-C-R-E-M-A. So those are the names that were drawn so again congratulations to seth Reuter. we'll be reaching out to you and uh and getting those tickets transferred over to you and again the backup winner is lacrema jacob that's the uh the lucky listener that that may be going to uh the game with us again what i wanted to to point out you know some people are at a distance they might not be able to make the trip um the ticket's yours 
You can resell it. You can do whatever you want. Shouldn't have any issue getting 500 bones out of it because they're, it's a real. Or real you can come hang out with us and have a ton of fun. <laughs> exactly. Probably too much fun. Hopefully it's somebody who's local that can actually join us because we're going to have a blast, man. It's, it's going to be, be awesome. great. It's going to be great. So there you have it. With that, we're going to go ahead and sign off, get out of here. Thank you guys for hanging out the post game show. Um, we're going to be doing this. Like I said, we'll be back next week and um, we're going to, we're going to make it a little bit better each time. We'll get better each time. You guys just be patient with us and really, really appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all have a good night. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world. And go Pack Go. Third down, inches to go. Good meter. 17 to 14.